can, I can take a break from eating. I just always get in the door like 10 minutes before yeah. this starts and I haven't eaten. So I'm like starving. No, you're so good. I wanted to ask, so this is my question and to, while everybody else pops on. Good. Hi, Em. Um, I want to ask, so how has it been going with the, from the last call that we had, right? Getting coaches to diamond faster. What has happened in that one week's length of time? What have you implemented? What have you noticed? What have you taken to your team? Can you kind of tell me about that? Let's open with that. Do you want me to go first? Yes, I would love that. And by the way, I have two sick kids home today, so I'm trying to keep them quiet. You guys can go in the other room. Um, you are fine. So what I did um, is um, I opened up an application. I made a Wufu application for um, all of my emeralds who want to be in the Push to Diamond group that we're starting on Monday the 12th. Mm -hmm. um, and I just made it a really big deal. I felt like making an application made them feel like it was a little bit more formal. Um, and I opened it up to anyone in my downline that wants to be a part of it. I asked my working diamonds if they wanted to help run it with me. And so far we have good interest. So um, I'm going to close down the applications on Friday. Um, and that seems to be working. And then I took your idea. I think you and I talked about it on just our individual call, but I'm doing a team cup for my own team in March. And I have four teams of four that are signed up and um, they're so excited. Like they created graphics in our team and they're really pumped up. And I have like prize levels like I did before an individual prize, a team prize. And then if they hit success club 10 or more, um, they get an additional prize. So um, I feel like it just kind of brought that team cup feeling back to our team this month just because it worked so well last month. I didn't want to mm. lose that momentum. So that's been really good too. So I'm hoping with coaches hitting success club and then moving into this push to diamond group that I'm going to start popping some diamonds here soon. For sure. You might want to even consider uh, even doing it for another 30 days, like into April. And I only say that because you'll create that consistency, you know, with like a 90 day and obviously switching it up and maybe a little bit. Um, but you know, think of what you can do next for April and then that's down the road. Um, but just spur off that momentum and that excitement going into, you know, before summit. Yeah. Awesome. Would be really cool. Love that. Yay. Cool. Thank you for sharing. Who else wants to share what they've done? Since our last call, getting coaches to diamond faster, right? What have you done to implement, um, be proactive with your team, anything like that? What has been happening? Emily, go. Hi. Um, so I was not on last week's call. I listened to half of it, so I'm guilty of not even finishing the other half yet. Um, but I have just been, I would say just, I guess just talking to my team more and just like finding out who really wants this and realizing um, I've had some even since the start of the year that said they want it and now they don't. So I really am just at that place, I think, of um, rebuilding, to be honest. And I am going, I'll be running a, um, I have quite a few actually that are hitting Emerald right now. And um, I have two that are happening this week. One happened last week. So I will be running uh, push to diamond together as a team. And I think that that, like, I just believe that that's going to spark more excitement and, and momentum. And I am loving these. Like, I love that idea of doing a team cup within your own team, because that I really saw that that helped them and they were excited about it. Some of them fell short of their goals, but I think continuing that on would really help them. Um, very cool. I love that you said, I, I'm starting to see the common theme and that we're all going back to the mothership or getting our coaches to re-engage with us and doing that, you know, just, it's going to build confidence within them. Obviously they always, the beautiful thing is they always have something to recruit to. So they're constantly recruiting because it feels like the start and the stop because they don't know when something, you know, takes place. But if you can think about like the next 90 days, like what does your marketing calendar look like? What can they invite to? But I love that you said that, that you're doing it as a team. That's a big deal. Cool. Okay, we have time for one more and then we'll jump into our topic. What else? Yeah, Shannon, go. Hey, so um, we've been doing the Power Hours Live and it's been awesome. So we changed the name to Party Hour and we play music and we bring snacks and 
water. Um, so it's been great. And I just have this graphic of like people having a party and having fun and um, just really trying to make it really fun. And we had uh, nine people on one at one time. And so that was exciting. We're just kind of catching the momentum, but we did three last week. And so our goal is to do three together each week and then three on our own each week. Um, anyway, it's going awesome. So I love that. Did you have the consistent nine always show up for every single one? No, not for every single one. Um, but we did have at least, I think there were like, at least like, you know, minimum three or so, and then up to nine. So, um, and then the people that couldn't make it live on the, the live ones did it, you know, they were talking about things they did on their own and yeah, uh, I love it. Keep it up and keep it going regardless if you just have three. I mean, that is plenty, but it will start to, you know, they'll, they'll start to realize what it is. And I even had a coach earlier say um, that their spouses of their, the, their husbands of their, of the coaches are actually thanking the other coach that's like, that's do that's hosting it and literally saying, you know what, you, my wife is able to get done in an hour what she was taking five hours to do. So very yeah. proactive. I would just say, keep doing it. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. So Taryn wanted a topic and then she doesn't show up. So we're going to bypass that topic for a, a moment and see if she does show up. But I feel like, I mean, just the vibe of what my other calls have been about, I mean, kind of give you these topics and I'll just see what your, what your thoughts are. So today we could talk about finding business builders. We could talk about um, your onboarding system or getting coaches to SC. What are your thoughts? And how about, let's actually open up to those three topics. And I just want to hear like a best practice in, in something that was said, because I want this to be like, okay, what is going well? What are you doing well? What can we teach others? And the beautiful thing is most of the time when you start talking about it, you realize maybe I haven't been doing that as much as I used to. I need to re-engage in that. Um, but talk to me, like first question, let's start with this one. How are you getting your coaches to hit success club? Like it is the sixth day of the month, right? How many of you have coaches that have points on the board? Raise your hands. Okay. So what Jess is like, uh, maybe. Okay. Hey, you're good. And by the way, your hair looks gorgeous. You told me last time you were getting your hair done and it looks really pretty dark hair club. Um, so let me ask you, what is the best practice that you're doing right now? It's the six of the month. What are you doing that to get them to engage in helping people early on in the month? Talk to me. No wrong answer. You're doing something. Shannon, go. Thank you. Um, sure. Yeah. Well, we're doing um, two free challenges a month. So we're doing one right now. And our goal is to invite at least 30 new people for each free challenge every two weeks, like 30 new people individually. So we've just been getting this going. Um, and it's been awesome because I'm like, okay, guys, we got to master the invite of the free challenge. We got it. We're, we're kind of starting from the ground up right now. So mastering the invite of the free challenge, because a lot of people are like, you know, not hitting success, but I'm not adding coaches, customers. Um, and so we got to master the invite of the free challenge. You got to master the, the talking to people about their health and fitness goals. We've got to master the first part. Cause I'm like, if you want people to hit, you know, if you want um, paying customers, this has to start over here. Um, so the free groups we're doing, the best one we're, we've done is uh, jump into fitness. And it's just um, exercise 30 minutes a day, and it's a really easy transition into the challenge pack. Um, that's something I started years ago. Uh, one we're doing right now, which is so fun, is a jumping jack challenge. And we're adding up, so we had over 2,000 jumping jacks on the first day yesterday out of the group. Um, so we just had everyone doing jumping jacks. This one girl was on a hike, and as she was going on a hike, she just found people to do jumping jacks on the hike along the way. And they were, they did like over a hundred together on the hike and, um, but just, you know, making it really fun. Um, like, so we've done like push up challenges, jumping jack challenges, veggie challenge, like anything that you can add up. I think that's really good. Cause we're like, okay, we did this today. We had this many, how many can we do tomorrow? Who wants to join? You know, let's invite more people tomorrow and, um, just kind of build up the momentum. But Anyway, that's what we're, we're really focusing on because on our team, we just kind of hit, hit this plateau where, you know, we had a good solid team, but we were kind of all talking to the same people and talking to our team because we liked our team. And so we're just trying to expand. So that's working good. 
excited, dude. Let awesome. Perfect. Yeah, Thank you so much for sharing. Who wants to go next? And you know I'm not afraid to call you out, Christine Steins. Go. <laughs> oh, Brittany. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. You okay. can do this, I promise. Um, Coaches yeah. to SC, what are you doing? Um, so I did a few power hours last week, but I only had like two people show up to each of them, but I did them. <laughs> um, I'm trying to put together, get my mind wrapped around doing push groups. I did a lot of those when I started, I was thinking about it. Like I'm always like, Oh, I was a self starter. I didn't need my coach. I just did it. Like actually I was in push groups. So I'm trying to do it. But, um, this kind of stuff is like, I don't know why, it's paralyzing to me. Like the option overload to me is, I mean, i trying to not be negative about it. It's not my unique ability, this kind of stuff. And literally I've been sitting here like all morning just kind of circling around this thing I've been doing all week. So, so is it just the fear of maybe setting the expectation of it? I just, I just have like a thousand questions of how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Like the push groups I've been before, I feel like are probably outdated. So I can't reuse that stuff. So I need to create a new one or use someone else's and um, figure out how I'm going to do that. And if I want to partner with other people to do it, just like recreating the content. Mm -hmm. um, think, is that really the best use of my time? Or should I just plug them into my upline stuff? I just, I just, don't know. It's totally. My brain is just going a little. You're good. How so I was you... like, I've got to get on this call and get some fresh air. <laughs> You're good. Are you feeling okay pregnancy wise? You good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're well, good. good. We can blame pregnancy. I like that. <laughs> hey, you're good. Okay. So my question for you is, is how did Melissa instill the belief about success club towards you in the business? Uh, I just had like a lot of, I, did she I talk about it? More like, she did, I guess. I think it was more just like, I had a lot of pride. She posts numbers in our group and I wanted I, to be the top. Okay. So competitive, being competitive. A lot, right? Yeah. Which is, is perfect. And you'll get those competitive people that if you dangle the carrot, they're going to make it happen. Right. Yeah. I feel like at this point, if you create the expectation, it's very simple to do with your brand new coaches. Right. I feel like I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one right now with Christine. It's kind of fun. And you guys are all just kind of hanging out. This is cool. So literally, I feel like if you did exactly that, like go wait, starting forward, right. Is your conversation with your exist or excuse me, with your new coaches is literally the expectation of it. This month, and a lot of my coaches, what they'll do is the first month they'll have, you know, them help one or two people just to have them do it alongside with them. Then they create the expectation in, in month two, okay, like of, of Success Club, unless they're a self-starter, then of course it's in the first month. So that's really simple to do. The hardest part is going back to your existing coaches and be like, okay, this is the new norm, right? And everybody's kind of in agreement with that. But I would just say this, it's, it's what I've said before. You have an opportunity right now, and it's only the sixth of the month to write in your team page, like who is working towards helping three people this month? Who's working towards getting back to rank? Who's working, and I would literally do a post exactly like that. Like who is, and I would start asking these questions. Who is working towards a new rank? What is your goal for the month? And I would literally see who responds, and then that is your, who you should work with. The problem with this, and I say this time and time again, is we get in the habit of creating the, or excuse me, of assuming that they're working towards something that they're not really working towards because we haven't ever created the expectation, right? And it, you remember Z's um, training that she did, how our coaches actually need their handheld so much. They need that. Um, do you guys all remember that? They need that constant, like, um, not feedback, but constant, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Context, content, or they're not going to do. But I would say treating it just like that. But I would ask, you know, great leaders ask great questions. So I'd ask them just more questions of like, where are you at? And then just in start instilling that. Like, because when I work with coaches and they say, okay, I hit SE five by the fifth, 10 by the 10th, 15 by the 15th, 20 by the 20th, whatever you do, right? And I always say, well, why do you do that? And they say, well, my upline told me I should. Okay, cool. Well, are you doing the same thing for your coaches? No, I'm just assuming that they're going to do it. They're not going to do it. 
you know? So I really feel like, and this goes for everybody on here, I would say, start asking the question of like, what are you working towards and why? How can I be there for you? What can we do to celebrate once you get there? Um, because right now, this is the thing is we all hustle at the end of the month, but it's just like the conversation we had last time. It's like, you have to treat every single day as it's either the first or the last day of the month, right? What are you going to do today? If it was the last day of the month, you would work a little bit harder. You would look, work a little bit more. You would say, you know, true to your time. You stay true to exactly the context of, or the content that you um, have on your plate. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be chasing shiny objects because you knew this was the last day to work really hard within the month. Right? So I feel like as of right now, ladies, if there's something that you can get great at, it's the expectation of it all. Hands down. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Emily, you're not in your head. Natanya's not in her head. Sorry, you're all muted. Yeah, you're good. Just unmute yourself. So I recently reached out to my mentors, which I talked about last week, how I'm mentoring a select few. I just kind of asked them um, for some help to delegate some stuff, you know, to raise them up as leaders too and get it off my plate. And it's great because they come up with ideas that I don't even have or that I can't come up with. And one of them was I had these images created for a daily, like months ago, I asked my team beginning of the year what I could do to help better serve them as a leader. How could I help support you grow, blah, 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 because I need to know so I'm not wasting my time doing A when they really need B. And one of the things was they wanted daily check-ins, daily accountability. And I'm like, really? Like a push group pretty much. I'm like, okay, you know, like, I don't really like doing that because I, I could do it myself, right? But if they want it. So I created these images. It was like every day of the week, Monday through Friday, that I would post and you had to check in your accountability below it. But one of my mentorees had the idea of doing a polling option where you just create a poll and they click the ones that they got done. And then we can see by the numbers at a glance, like, okay, everybody's getting their workout in, but no one's getting invites in, or three people are getting invites in. And just at a quick glance, you can see, instead of reading through the comments of like 50 people, you can, cause it'll tell you like how many people voted on which option. And um, so one of them is going to post that poll every single day for that accountability, just to kind of keep an eye on who's doing what. And that'll help you determine who you need to reach out to and kind of help a little bit more because people can say things till they're blue in the face, but are they actually doing them? Mm -hmm. And is your time being spent wisely um, with the ones you think deserve it? You know, like numbers don't lie, right? So I'm guilty of this, of spreading myself too thin to where it impacts my business because I'm trying to help, 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 serve, serve, serve. And it may pay off for them, but it doesn't pay off for me. And it's like, whoa, I got to lead by example here. Hold up. And you just have to see how you can like streamline everything. So that was one way that just in the past week or so that was really eye opening and to give them that, um, that delegation to do and they feel important or whatever, but very powerful tool. Then we have a, a win the week at the end of the week. I want to know what you did in your health and fitness and then also in your business so that we can celebrate you. We have ring the bell. And the ring the bell is for anything positive. I don't care if it's I got my power hour done or I woke up and didn't press snooze. Like I want to know every little thing because it's those little things that add up to the big things. It's not just, hey, I, I helped someone sell a challenge pack today um, or sign a coach or whatever. It's the little habits that, you know, the unsexy things that get us to the sexy things. So I want to hear all about that. And then I also did a challenge um, a Emerald factory challenge for my whole entire downline. So for every two coaches they sign, they get a point and then you can go, I want you to go Emerald like, you know, five, 10 times this month. I keep going Emerald. And then if your PS goes Emerald, you get an extra point. So I want them to really help their Emeralds grow. So that challenge is going on now. Whereas then I have over in my slide on over into the DMS, I have a DM message of just like the people that are pushing for diamond, like that are three or less coaches away, really selective. And we talked about this on a, a other call as well with, you know, asking people where they're at and what they want to do, but just keeping the, the like-minded people together because it's easier for us to motivate each other to go get SC, like just go get it, like just stop messing around and go get it. But you wouldn't talk to a coach like that. Who's, who struggles with success club or who's new. So I'm trying to kind of separate that and not speak to my team page in one voice because that one voice doesn't hit everybody and every personality. So I'm still feeling forward at this and trying these new things, but um, the daily accountability really helps to see where we're falling short as a team 
Um, like we're really good at being part of the product. We're really good at getting our workouts in, but fear sneaks in for those invites and people that say, I want to be diamond by this month or by summit, but they're not getting no stinking invites out. So, okay, we need to address this. So it helps in more ways, not just with success club, but just seeing where your team is falling short, where their fears are, which opens up a door to lots of team call ideas or trainings and stuff like that. So, um, you rock. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, and even Kelly chimed in. I do a poll every day, Monday through Friday. So what does your poll look like, Kelly? Um, it's just straight from my power hour. So I do like followed up with three to five people, invited three to five people, connected with three to five people, shake, workout, PD, um, recognition. I even, and the last thing I put on the poll is scheduled my power hour for tomorrow. And my coaches love it. I just, do, I mean, it's just part of my morning after I work out in the morning, I just go on quickly. You know, sometimes 10 coaches are on there checking in on things, sometimes five, sometimes I'll get a big day, like Mondays tend to be my most um, participated day, and it's like, you know, 20 people will check in that day. But even my discount coaches like to check in with like their shake, their workout, they feel like they're kind of participating in the team, and so you know, they don't do a lot of the other stuff on there, but at least they feel like they can be a part of it. For sure. And maybe even think, uh, uh, you know, just scheduling them in advance. So go, you know, doing your power mm -hmm. hour and scheduling your five or for the week. And then you don't have to worry about it. But I love Jess that you're like, I'm doing one after this call for sure. It's, mm -hmm. and it, we feel like we don't need to hold that accountability, but we really do. And I'm interested to hear how it goes for you, but I feel like that, you know, daily accountability will help in every single, single realm of this business. And Christine, maybe that will help you as well. Just like setting that expectation of like, Hey, this is what we need to be doing. And then creating those, you know, more live power hours, maybe over team calls or whatever it may be to kind of really, you know, re-engage them into the activities of it all. I like that. So let me ask you a question. What are you going to do after this call to create expectation for success club and the four vitals? Cause I like where this is going. I, obviously I see we're doing a poll. What else are you, what are, what else has come to your mind? You're like, okay, I need to start doing that. Jazz, you have been so quiet girl. I'm calling you out here. I'll unmute you. Don't, don't worry. There you go. Um, the, I'm going to do a poll right after this too. <laughs> um, I guess like right now I reached out to the ones that I am seeing that they're that they're putting in the effort you know and so what we did last month was the win the week uh, message pods and so right now I'm kind of at a standstill because a lot of the runners were not running like they didn't they so I, I, I think that maybe now setting an expectation to those win the week markers so like that they can recalibrate or figure out okay no like my hustle does not match this you know so i need to figure out what either either i need to rise up and step it up or i need to figure out like i should be a runner or uh, mm -hmm. whichever bracket they they want to choose um and, but in terms of like what can i do i think um would be maybe uh, explaining to them what the the difference would be in the week when the weeks for them so like that they can discern like okay no this is what I want and then kind of um, share with them I like I really loved last week how we talked about like talking about the money so I've been also applying that on my team page where I'm I've been saying like I've been waking up earlier like I've been waking up early at five when my kids are asleep because I want to bring in 500 extra dollars this month. And then on Thursday, one of my um, coaches made $200 and I made a big old graphic and I was like, she's going to pay her student loan. And so I'm making it more tangible. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just finding different ways and also di applying different ways of motivation like, um, so that they can see, oh, okay, I do, I do want to grow my business and I do want to have people, but what is, how can I apply it to me? You know, I guess like finding different ways to get them to pull the, to pull their string to say like, I can relate to that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's kind of what's going on right now in, in okay. Perfect. I like it. And I would just say run after it, make it happen. But I love the recognition piece and it may it be intangible because that would speak to every single person, like the opportunity to pay things off. And maybe you obviously will entice those others that haven't really stepped up this month to, 
to get started. So I like that. Thank you. For when I do that, I also shared it on my Instagram story. And so it allowed people to, um, so when I did that on my story, then my next uh, story was a poll. And I would say like, how many of you have um, student loans that you're still paying? And so I had like 40 people poll on there. So it allowed me to reach out to those. And then now those are people and connections that I'm going to talk mm. about the business opportunity. So that's kind of also what I'm teaching my team is to find different creative questions to post on polls on Instagram. So like that, they can build those with connections. That was a good one. I like it. I hope you guys are writing that down. Okay, Jess, I haven't had you speak yet. What about you, girl? Um, what was the question again? <laughs> um, as far as coaches getting to SC. Oh, um, yeah. Or what are you so going to do? Haven't, oh, I, so I, I haven't seen go Success Club yet because I just did my board for last month. So I'm like, I can't believe it's the six. Um, but I always like do a leaderboard every month um, for those who reach Success Club or who got any points. And then um, I know like, some people just do names for their board, but I like to actually like um, save up their picture because I just feel it's more like it takes me more time, but I'm like, okay, this is once a month. And I don't know. I just feel it's more meaningful like to have their pictures on there. And so like I just did one um, and okay. So what am I doing? I also created a two week or sorry, uh, like a race to Emerald by St. Patty's day because <laughs> it's green. Um, so I created like a little group um, and added people in there and every day, like Monday through Friday, I'm posting something in there about Emerald. Um, like, okay, the task today is to make your screensaver like an Emerald, you know, like little things like that, or write down um, your dream team, um, how, why Emerald's important, like a video, like team cycle bonuses, like each day, something like that. And I've done that before. And every time I do that, it really like I pop um some emeralds from that um cut, kind of cut like they're in a competition and, and I offer prizes like the first person to get there gets this like $25 gift card to Amazon or um you know then $10 or $5 kind of thing and so it's kind of like a little competition and they like it so that's what I'm doing and hopefully I'll get some emeralds and and that will help some of my coaches with their uh, goal of getting to diamond for sure and jazz is asking is it a seven day race um, it's actually, uh, well, what is it? It's like two weeks. So they, they, they had to, well, I started it yesterday. So they have to like get there by the 17th, which is St. Patrick's day. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. That's cool. So jazz, if you wanted to recreate it, you could literally do it when the, tw you could do it five yeah. days or something like that. Like yeah, that's like super five day push, but yeah. It's yeah. No, I like that. Okay. Let's shift this conversation now to finding business builders. What are you doing to find business builders? Do you A, here's A, you recruit for the business opportunity, or B, you recruit for the challenge group, and then you hand select them to be your coaches? Talk to me. What's working for you? Hmm. Cool. I'll go. Yeah, take it. Um, I feel like my, mo my uh, best coaches have always been my challenge group. Okay. So I've really shifted my focus from trying to just hold message people who've never been in my challenge group about being a coach. Um, I've done that before and I feel like it's kind of been a disaster the first month. Um, and they're confused because they don't really know what a challenge group is and I'm trying to recruit them to have their friends come in. But mm -hmm. anyway, it's just made my life so much easier when I really put my focus on finding challengers and then making my challenge groups really awesome. So they don't want to leave. And um, my challenge groups are Right now, it, it's taken a long time to get there, and I will say that last year it wasn't like this at all, but right now my challenge groups are rocking. Like, I think 80 Day Obsession helps. Mm -hmm. We're also running our monthly group on top of that. People are so connected that I have challengers that, like, one lives in Portland and one lives in Seattle, and they just, like, got together halfway, and they are sending each other gifts, and it feels like this big family. And so I feel like when you can create that, then people don't want to miss out on being a part of the coaches. Um, and in my challenge groups, every day, the first week of the new monthly group, I have each of my coaches do kind of like a welcome video that they post in the challenge group. And it just talks about why they became a coach and a little bit about their situation. And so 
it almost becomes like a, a coach sneak peek within my challenge group. So people see that, you know, I've got a lot of moms, a lot of working moms. I even have some girls that don't have kids, um, all different ages. And, and then we talk about almost like, here's why we decided to work the business and here's how we kind of do it. And, you know, this is like changed our lives. And so they're seeing that for the first week and they're getting really hyped up and then they're super involved in the challenge group. And then about week two of the actual group, I reach out to them and say, Hey, do you want to join my group? And so far it's worked, you know, fairly well. Um, oh, and then you muted and you're still talking. <laughs> Sorry. I was just going to say that's what <laughs> Right. Perfect. You rock. Thank you so much. I love that. I feel like, and I feel like a lot of coaches, typically my three to four star diamonds typically do that, right? They convert or excuse me, they recruit to the challenge group and then they convert. And it, and the beautiful thing is just get really great at the converting process. For some reason, once my coaches hit five star diamond, they're like, okay, I feel completely confident in talking about the business. I will go more towards the business opportunity, but I would say do what works for you. I have, um, I, I, ha I had a couple um, coaches talk about this earlier today, and I loved what they what they said. So, for example, like what um, com that converting process I'm talking about, it, it makes me think of Michael Folsom. Like she'll literally go in and just start hand picking. Like I want you on my team. You're incredible. I love your energy. I love your excitement. It'd be an honor for you to be on my team. And she creates this culture behind it where people never want to leave. Like what you were saying, Kelly. And I would say, so get really, really great as, um, even advertising for your sneak peeks within your challenge group, like, you, like what you were saying, like get them to understand what it's all about. But I love So Jay Lynn is a six star diamond who is 10 star diamond qual. I don't know if I've told you ladies that it's just insane. So she would literally went from six star diamond and she's three weeks in a 10 star diamond qual. So just like jumping really quick, but what she does, and I love this and she actually gives mad props to her up on um, Micah. And she basically said like, um, <laughs> Micah went live on, and basically the topic was screw the business, rock your life. And it's all about like self love and like bettering yourself and why you do the four vitals to better your life. Um, but also in, in with that, she went and complimented and she thanked every single person that, that is in her current challenge group or has been a challenger with her for a very long time and, and just really, you know, wanted to create that relationship and that bond. And by doing so, it also made them be like, and then she asked the question like, Hey, have you ever thought about coaching and literally they'll say well of course I have but and they'll give you an objection that you've always heard well it's too expensive or then I you know all those things you already know how to overcome those objections but the the biggest thing I'm getting at here is you have to ask the question of hey would you ever consider being a, a coach on my team I'd be honored if right so I would say if you're really great at um, recruiting for the challenge group, just get really great at, at your conversion process. So you really, uh, you, so you know how to hand pick them and then you can, you know, you're taking care of two birds with one stone. So you don't feel like you have to do both, but you're going in both avenues. Does that make sense? But I love that. Um, I'm trying to think of what, I just wanted to see what other, other little notes I had there. Um, who else? What, what do you do? Emily, talk to me. Sorry, you're writing notes. Sorry, I'm like fiercely scribbling here. Um, so, sorry, what is the question again? Finding business builders. Finding business builders, that's right. Um, I most, like, I think my strongest coaches have always come out, out of my challenge groups. I do um, a sneak peek into coaching every month. And I open that up to my whole team. And so I always feel like it's a win, even if I get one that is excited about it. And especially even if my coaches get one. So I feel like it's always worth it. Um, I've done three day ones. I've done five day ones. Um, I really like the three day one short and sweet. And then I just keep posting in there and I just recycle it every month. So I just add new people, change the cover. Um, that is working, but I definitely feel like my strongest coaches tend to come out of my challenge groups because they already have built that relationship with me more. They see more of the culture and, and then That's they're like, cool. why did you go? So for sure. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Your poor little voice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um, who else wants to share? What are you doing to find working coaches? Yeah. Shannon, go. Um, something that works really good is um, saying inviting people to join our free groups um, just to watch what we're doing so you know finding people um, on social media who are exercising already 
and just saying, you know, hey, um, have you considered doing what I do? You're already doing it. Um, do you want to just check out what we're doing? And so it's kind of like a sneak peek where they go into the free group and just see, because there's just so much energy. Like we have this free group we're running as a team. It's like 1,600 people and it's just so much fun. And so then they go in there and they're like, oh yeah, I could totally do that. I could, you know, but, um, and then they become a challenger and um, they're kind of shadowing me along the way, but I just kind of walk them through the process um, because definitely, you know, challengers, become the best coaches. I've, I went to that confidence point where I had a lot of diamonds and I just recruited for the business and they would get to diamond or, you know, even higher than that. But then they build a house of cards and crumble. Like I had this one like diamond, she even went to summit and she'd like never done a whole beach body workout, but she knew a lot of people and got a lot of favors and got to diamond or whatever. So um, just creating that challenger so that they're really strong in, you know, their belief in the, the programs and the products. Um, but anyway, that works really great is just, so it's kind of like a sneak peek where they join the free challenge and then they join the paid challenge as a challenger, but as a coach. And, and then I post their results like, Hey, you know, two weeks into it, congratulations. So-and-so they're doing awesome. And all these people are commenting and I'm like, okay, invite those people to the free challenge and then invite them to the beach by challenge and kind of go along. So that works. Perfect. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. I have a, a action item for you all ladies. You ready for this? Many of you have done this with me before, but I need you to do it. Okay. I need you to get a piece of paper or literally you probably have a piece of paper. And I want you to start writing down attributes or characteristics of the person that you want to attract within this business. Okay. And, it, and I would literally just write it because this is something that you're going to also put by your computer because every single time that you're doing a post or you're talking within your challenge group, you're, you're recruiting for your next sneak peek, whatever it may be, okay, you're going to remind yourself of these characteristics. So I'll give you an example or do you all, let me ask you this, when you, and I'll give you my example last because I don't want to skew this, but um, when you are recruiting somebody, what's the number one trait that you want them to have? Unmute yourself and tell me, please. Like determined, successful, um, like, like that. Do you get what I'm saying? So what's in driven, driven. Okay, perfect. What else? A self starter. Okay. What else? Positive. Love it. Okay. No ego. What did you say, Shannon? No ego. Okay. And then what was the one after that? Collaborative. Ooh, that's a good one. Big word there, Jazz. I like it. Okay, keep going. Natanya, Emily. Hardworking. Hardworking. Christine. Um, influential. Good word. I like that too. These are all amazing. Okay, keep going. Any, any else? Yeah. Mine's a toss up between having a vision and mm -hmm. tenacity. Ooh, I like both of them. So I'm writing down both. Okay. So if any of those resonated, please write them down. But I want you to build a list of 10 characteristics that you're literally going to put at your desk. At, so anytime that you're writing a post, anytime that you're talking about the business opportunity, anytime, it doesn't, like I said, and it sounds like the, the vast majority of you are recruiting within your challenge group, but you still, you know, if you see these natural talents in people, I want you to call them out like, hey, I see that you have mad tenacity. Like, I don't know, put it into context, right? Like, I, I, I that's, you know, and, and have that relate to like who you're looking for on your team. Like my work, my word would be magnetic. If somebody is not magnetic, I have a very hard time working with them. And this is actually something that I would do when I was hiring people. So I, before this, I'm not sure if all y'all know, but I worked for Buckle for 12 years. And depending on the season, I have 30 to 50 employees. And I would, so I'd mass recruit, right? Mass hire. And literally my number one word was magnetic. And I would literally say to myself, I'd be like, okay, can I be with this person every single day? Are they magnetic enough that I want to hang out with them? If it was a yes, they were hired. If it was a no, it was a like it was not even an option, right? Because I was like, I am not doing that. But I want you to do the same thing for your business. And I say this because what I realized with my five to eight star diamonds, not only do they talk about who they want on their team, they talk about who they do not want on their team. And they address that. It's like, they literally say, you know what? Yeah, when I first started Beachbody, I was A, B, and C. But you know what? I'm not that anymore. I am this. And who I'm looking for is this. Do you see where I'm going with this? And of course, you're going to naturally attract these people 
and they're going to want to be part of, you know, and literally that's where you tie them into a challenge group. You get them results, you get them, you know, doing the four vitals, reading personal development. And then from there you can decide if it would make sense. But I would just say, do me a favor and write out your list of 10. It'd be kind of cool for you to share one with me too. And then set it on a post-it note or whatever on your computer. So every time that you are writing about that, talking about it, you're noticing that, okay? And, and you're writing to that person because that's what you want them to attract. And then I'd also say is get in the habit of talking about what this business has done for you more. Of course, if you're doing income claims, for the sake of Jemima not emailing me on behalf of what you're putting out there, make sure you use the Beach Body Does Not Guarantee, blah, 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 right? If you're doing that. But I would say get in the habit of talking a lot about what Beachbody has done for you, the lifestyle, how it's allowed you to, you know, go part-time in what your currently career profession, or now you're allowed to stay home with your, with your kiddos. I think every single one of you stays home besides I know Kelly does work part-time part-time teacher. Yeah. Little perky too much. Um, but literally I would say get in the habit of talking about that more. Christy Kronzner, uh, I uh, absolutely adore her. Obviously Jess knows this, but one thing that I love that she has her coaches do, and I'm not sure if she still does, but I loved this is she, uh, not, she encourages, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say make, she encourages them to talk about the business opportunity at least twice per week. Right. Jess. Okay. So that's still a common thing, but I love that. And I heard that years ago because then that way, by talking about it more, you're going to spur up content. You're going to spur up conversation with people that are like, you know what? I do want to check this out now. This, you know, this is a business opportunity as well. And I love that you bring them in through challenge group. I would just say, don't discount yourself just because you haven't found great people through talking about the opportunity. I would still kind of sprinkle that here and there. Does that make sense? Yes, Jess, go. About Christy. So yeah. I learn a lot from her because she's like the total opposite for me. She hates challenge groups. Like uh, she won't say that, but she doesn't, she recruits solely for the business. And, um, and so challenge groups are not her thing and challenge groups. Like, um, I forget who was saying Kelly or was saying like challenge groups are my, like everything. Like I pour my heart into them and that's where I get all my coaches. And so, but I need to learn from her because yeah, I don't talk about the business enough in that way. Yeah. Um, and that's where she gets like all her coaches. So I feel like, yeah, she has a lot to teach me and, and talking because she joined coaching for the business opportunity. And so did I, um, I didn't join as a challenger. So, um, yeah, I feel like, you know, she just has an advantage that way. So, but yeah, for I'm sure. glad you mentioned her. <laughs> What's interesting is that you, but you don't, that's how you were brought in, but you, that's not how you invite to it. So maybe an aha moment of yeah. like, wow, like that spoke to me. And I think, feel like if you start talking about that more, you're going to start attracting people like you. Yeah. Right? yeah. So yeah. Kind of that's think, my like weakness, like is recruiting. So I just need to like make that a priority. For sure. And it's kind of one of those things, ladies, and you can all attest to this. It's like putting your befores and afters out there. The first time it absolutely stinks, right? I'm saying good words because we have a little child right here. Um, it absolutely stinks. But if after you do it one or two times, you're like, oh, I got this, right? It's just like your challenge group. Oh, I got this. It'll be the same thing when you start talking about it. So I'd really, you know, and, and just a reminder, just because you're recruiting them into the business opportunity does not mean that they don't go in a challenge group. That's the first thing they do. And I would encourage them to at least be a challenger for one to two weeks before you start adding on those additional layers. So they get the experience. You know, because even just if they lose five pounds, the smile on their face, they're excited. They're like, oh my gosh, I did this, you know, and they're going to start talking about it. So I would really just say, you know, remind yourself, even if they come in on the business opportunity, you still have to get them to love doing challenge groups, helping people like remember that as well. So good conversation today, ladies. Did you guys get a little nugget out of today? Christine, did you get a little nugget? You're so cute. I love it. Um, I appreciate you ladies. I'm really excited for next week to, for us to have a guest speaker. Um, so make sure that you come, you know, obviously with your cameras on being ready, you know, obviously they're going to talk amazing content and then you can start asking questions. So please be involved. Please be engaged. It'll be a great experience. But then after that, we literally, only have like three weeks left together. Um, and of course I'll restructure all. I, I'm like, don't cry. It's okay. We'll do something new, but it's kind of cool because we do end the end of this month. And then you guys have a couple weeks before you go on vacation. I will probably, uh, meaning the success club trip, if you're doing that. Um, the beautiful thing is I also scheduled a trip during that time. So I will be incognito, but we'll do something the first couple weeks of, of April to kind of keep the engagement going. And then we'll figure out what our next little route is. Does that sound good? Okay. Is there anything else that you ladies want to share today before we go? 
I appreciate you. Yeah, you're fine. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate every single one of you. Great content today. Please, please, please just be very action oriented and run with what you were like, oh, I need to do this. Do it now. Does that sound good? And do your list of 10 characteristics, 10 attributes, whatever it is, and make sure you're going back to those. Does that sound good? Okay. Thank you. Bye, ladies.